Happy Christmas to everybody. Hope and pray that this year will be a great blessing for each and every one of us. As we are the children of God, we come to the presence of God. Without hearing God's word, there is no blessing in our life. Because the Lord says, it is the light and it is the lamp unto your feet and path. And also Lord say, this is the bread for you which came from heaven. Not baked by any earthly bakery, but it is from the Lord. And we believe the word of God is God breathed. And it is very powerful and it is very quick and sharper than any other two-edged sword. We are so great and we are so glad and we are so blessed that we have such a word. That is the word of Lord Jesus Christ. And we say gospel and we say Pentateuch, we say Torah, we say the books of prophets, prophets the books of the wise people, the book of even the uneducated people, illiterate people. So praise God in this morning, I got the privilege to be with you again to bring God's word in the day of Christmas. Christmas season is a very uh, blessed season for each and every one of us. All the business people also, they make money out of this season. And the hotel, motel, everything are packed and the tourist places are packed but there was no place for Jesus to be born. That's why he has taken the manger to be born. Many question and many have doubts, why did Jesus Christ born in a manger? Dear friends, dear my church, Jesus took the privilege to be born in a manger. We know the manger is a very lowly and very humble place and nobody will be happy to stay more than five minutes over there. If you go and fetch some milk, only that is your duty. You get the milk and come out. You cannot stay over there for a longer time. But my Savior, the one who created heaven and earth, the one who, who has the authority over all and all universe and in heaven, he is the one he chose to be born in a manger. Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1 and verse 30 to 33. That's what the portion, what we read. And today's message is, already I have preached once this message, uh, not here, but this message thrilled my heart and this message gave me a new enthusiasm to bring forth in the world is seeing a very panic period. Everywhere disaster, everywhere distraction, Everywhere calamities, everywhere fight, war, no peace, only fight and fight and jealousy and uh, all kinds of anger. But in such a moment, God has allowed us to have peace in our heart and a very uh, overruling Holy Spirit power in our heart that we may celebrate the Christmas. Dear friends, the world has seen Already around some wise people says in, uh, in the year of 1964, one magazine was introducing uh, one article. And in that article it has been given, till now there are already 1469 wars has been taken place. 1469. That was in 1960s. But now more than that might have taken place. After that, there was a lot of words. And also, the world has seen two world war. In the first world war, around four crores of people lost their life. In the second world war, you can check in the Google also. In the second world war, around five crores and 46 lakhs of people lost their life. In the second world war, almost one and a half crores of children, they lost their life. And the word of God says, we are heading towards the third world war. We are heading towards the third world war. And that is not very far. It may be very close to us. The world is going to end. The world is going to see the disaster in very soon. 
because that is the gospel that is the word of jesus christ what he has promised to us and he said i am sending you like a lamb among the what sheep uh wolves tiger lion different kinds of animals are here in this world but we are we compared with the lamb very humble if you see them in the bakshi bazaar as the shepherd will be leading them or behind them one is going forward everybody going bowing down their head and they will be marching in on the bakshi bazaar in very rush time also if the first one is going to some dump into the pit everybody will dump into the pit that is the nature of lamb and jesus said you are like a lamb in the midst of the wolves and tiger and lion my dear friends my dear church this morning i have just brought the message for you and for me also to be encouraged my jesus christ is born in a manger and he is like a baby he born and we know that the greatest miracle of this christmas is god became like us that is the greatest miracle it is not the miracle the virgin has given birth to a baby boy it is not that miracle that joseph accepted mary it is not the greatest miracle that the angel has come and spoke to mary but the greatest miracle the only miracle is god became like man god is like man how can you must in that one that god who cannot the heaven cannot contain him such a mighty god such a powerful god such a uh, unlimited god he came and he become like man like you and me we should praise god we should say hallelujah and we should worship him from the depth of our heart saying lord who am i that you came down to this earth and become like me the meaning of this christmas is what god is with us the lord is with us he is not with somebody he is not only with the heavenly angels he is not only with the spirit beings but he is with us with you with your family with your need with your suffering with your sickness with your trouble in with your joy also sometime we push jesus out when we enjoy sometime we push god out from our home out from our heart when we are enjoying but when we get into problem then we invite jesus only jesus only jesus only jesus that is the nature of this human being and even so called christian dear friends here the today's message is his kingdom there will be no end his kingdom there will be no end can you imagine a kingdom which is not going to over a kingdom which is not going to vanish away from the map of this world once the president of iran which was persia before 1935 in the bible it is named as persia so one time the president of iran he said we will be blotting out israel from the map of world we will blot it out we will clean it delete it the map of israel from the world map it is not going to happen why because israel is not fighting alone but the god of israel is fighting for him hallelujah the god of israel is fighting for him and we are the spiritual israel we are not physical israel we are not the sons of abraham isaac and jacob but we are the spiritual israel and he is the same god who fights for you and for me this morning let me encourage you his kingdom is not going to be vani seve his kingdom will not be end that's what the word of god says about his birth many things has been given before 1000 years of his birth the first prophecy you will know in big, in book of genesis chapter 3 verse 15 what the god has promised to adam and eve then the second 
prophecy you will find in book of numbers chapter 24 and verse 17 if you read that one you will find out there was a prophet called balaam and there was a king of moab called balak friends balak he saw the israel people then he said who are these people they came out from mis uh, egypt and they are just uh, swiping out all the people those who are coming in front of them balak was so uh, fearful and he was so terribly afraid that he was thinking what to do with these people with our might with our sword we are not going to destroy israel so what we will do we will ask a prophet who is very close to the lord and he will be cursing these people then he sent messenger to balam and he said i will give you the property i will give you the gold i will give you the uh, silver i will give you the bronze and i will give you beautiful gifts you come once and curse these people they are very special we cannot fight and we cannot defeat dear friends my dear church balam said no if you give me all your kingdom still then i am not going to curse these people because these people belongs to god finally balam said okay wait tonight what the lord is going to tell me then i will do something in the night Lord says Balaam you go with them and you say whatever i will put in your heart Balaam went Balaam went and he said if you have bible you can see that one in book of numbers chapter 24 and verse 17 there the word of god says like this i see him but not now what kind of sentence this one sometime you read the word of god and meditate upon it you will enjoy you will be just like having a delicious food before you and you are enjoying what he is saying here he says i see him but he is not now but not now i behold him but not near how can he see who is not near after 60 before 60 also we get cataract in our eye we cannot see somebody sit before us and we will say oh pastor okay i recognize your voice but i cannot see because i have cataract problem and i have to go for surgery but the man of god the prophet he is seeing thousand years after the son of god who is going to come to this world to be born in a manger he will be the savior of this world and he says i am beholding but he is very far he is very far friends then he said a star shall come out of jacob star is not coming out of the commercial imagination of human being no star is not coming out of our mind star has came out of jacob and it is the fulfillment of the prophecy thousand years back even prophet isaiah also never born even prophet micah also not born even prophet zechariah also not born but balaam said a star shall come out of jacob and a scepter shall rise out of israel it shall crush the forehead of moab and break down all the sons of seth what i am saying is before the birth of jesus christ it has been prophesied we read also in book of micah chapter 5 verse 2 the place also indicated where jesus christ would be born that is ephrathah bethlehem you are very small one among many but in you the son of god is going to be born god loves the tiny one god loves the lovely one god loves the lowly one also very lowly one humble one friends why and how his kingdom is going to be remain forever the word of god says i will tell you two three things and i will finish up my sermon because today is a day of celebration 
today is a day of joy for each and every one of us why his kingdom will be remaining forever and how he will be ruling that's what i just want to put before you one day a king of babylon his name is navukarnishar i'm telling from bible i'm not telling my story uh, navukarnishar had a vision had a dream he saw a dream if you turn to book of daniel and chapter 2 you will find out that one so he has seen the dream in the dream he saw a very big image very great huge image then in that image he saw a very uh, different type of image that one the head is pure gold the head is pure gold then the chest part is silver and the belly and the thigh part is bronze then from down up to the leg it is iron then the leg is mix of two things one is iron another is clay such a huge idol such a huge image king nabukadnishar has seen after seeing the dream the dream has gone away the dream has vanished he forgot the dream what he has seen then what happened he called all the wise people of babylon and he say i have seen a dream but the dream has gone from me you have to interpret it you have to tell the meaning can you say the meaning without listening the dream we pastors are very clever when somebody share a dream immediately we pray to god lord give me something so i can share the message so we will immediately put something if it is there by chance they are getting it okay otherwise gone okay but here navukadnishar is saying i have seen the dream and that has gone from me he also doesn't know what he has seen then he the uh, the wise people they say king how it is possible you have seen a dream and you have forgotten that one how you are going to interpret and how you are going to give the meaning it is not possible no one can give it king was so furious and said i will destroy you everyone every wise men of this babylon are going to be destroyed i will kill everybody then the news reached to daniel my friends daniel said no no there is a god who reveal the mystery there is a god who reveal the hidden things there is a god who speak about the future there is a god who has the spirit that can uh, help the human being to understand the future friends daniel came and he explained the image king you have seen this image and that image is talking about four different kingdom the four head that is made out of gold that is babylon and you are the head of that one so you are the head second one the chest is made out of silver and that is representing the kingdom of medo persia then the belly part and the thigh part it is made out of bronze that is the kingdom representing greece alexander the great then the below thigh up to the leg that is iron part and the kingdom is representing romans then the last part the iron and the clay mixed together that is going to talk about the kingdom of lord then he has seen a stone has been cut out without hand and that has come and crushed the image the image was completely crushed down but what remained the stone was remaining and became so huge so huge and he says that will never end that is the kingdom of god my dear friends in this morning as we come to the presence of god and we are living in such a uh, such a uh, time of uh, peaceless time and the kingdoms are fighting against one country fighting against another country the lord is saying my kingdom shall not be end my kingdom shall not be end why 
what kind of kingdom that one this kingdom is different because when earthly kings are shedding the blood of others and they establish their throne the kingdom of this earth the kings and the rulers they shed the blood of the people and they establish their kingdom their throne but when they die everything is vanished alexander the great he came out to rule over the world he own it but at the very early age of 32 to 33 he died he died he no more soon after his death his kingdom was divided into four different parts but my lord he died he resurrected and lives forever the same way his kingdom also will be ruled forever few things just i want to tell you before i close my sermon the quality of his kingdom that we can find in book of daniel chapter 4 in book of daniel chapter 4 and verse 3 you will see there it is written how great are the signs how mighty his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion endures from generation to generation his kingdom the quality of his kingdom is it endureth from generation to generation that means there is no change exactly there is no change we all have change right we all have change early morning you go out by 7 o'clock and stand under the sun you will see your shadow will be bigger than you and you go up to 12 o'clock when you reach to 12 o'clock you will see your original figure you will get after 12 o'clock when the sun is going to set down you will see your shadow will be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger when the night comes you will be vanished your shadow will be vanished but my god he is yesterday and today and forever he is same he is the same god unchanging god friends in book of james chapter 1 verse 17 the word of god says all the good and perfect gifts comes from the lord in whom there is no change you have come to the lord you have come to such a baby who born in a manger he never change but he changed his form only because for you and for me to die on the cross of calvary he born in a manger he never change in bible uh, there was israel people once they were suffering in a foreign country and there was some plot against them there was a decree to kill all the jews people then mordecai he asked to his niece who esther he asked esther you go to your husband and tell to him that they are my people so you just spare them don't kill them okay you go to your husband and plead for us what esther said you know esther said my husband my king he did not call me for me i have seen a very beautiful jacket in brand factory fashion factory huh but uh, mummy uh, how is papa is he okay then mummy say okay okay he is having his uh, breakfast so you can go and ask him then with uh, such boldness he will they will go and ask to papa papa i have seen a jacket oh kitne ka hai huh? right mood is okay the children can approach to the father the mood is okay the wife is approaching the husband but for my lord there is no need of any mood only one mood that is loving mood that is loving mood that's why he is special that's why he is my lord and your lord he born in a manger to die on the cross and to save us and take us to heaven that we may stay with him forever forever and forever dear friends he is never changed he is the same god today yesterday and forever he is the same god he will not change so his kingdom also is not going to change because he is same all the time 
another verse I will tell you about his kingdom that you can find in book of Zechariah. I am taking so many references. Um, but uh, in book of Zechariah, chapter 6 and verse 13, the word of God says, It is he who shall build the temple of the Lord and shall bear royal honor and shall sit and rule on his throne and then there shall be a priest on his throne and the council of peace shall be between them both. He is going to establish a kingdom. He is going to establish a throne. And he will be the priest over there. Then what will come out of the throne? Peace. Peace. Pizza is very common. That you can get everywhere. But peace is not very common. Peace is very costly. No ruler is able to give peace. Today we think, Orissa people, we think, okay, in Katak, Bhavaneshwar, in some part of our uh, place, there is no persecution for Christians. But can you imagine other part of Odisha, how they are suffering, how the problem is going on? They cannot open their church building for celebrating Christmas. They cannot put a star that they may recognize them and they may loot them, they may persecute them. But thank God, our God is promising peace for you in this morning. He says, in my kingdom, there will be peace. When people come to him, they change. They change. And they find peace. You know about Apostle Paul. Before that, he was Saul. He was the persecutor of the church. He was destroying the church. He was killing the people. And he was dragging the Christians and putting them into jail. But when he met with Lord Jesus Christ, he changed. The peace which passeth all understanding was ruling in his heart. And he was forgiving each other. People were slapping him. But he says, thank you. Thank you. One of our union ministers says, we are no more sowing one lap when another slap has given to another cheek. No, no, the time is over. Recently he has given the statement. But let me, my friends, we are heading towards such a, such a uh, kingdom. There will be no slapping, there is no pushing, there is no hampering to anyone. There will be peace. Those who come to the Lord Jesus Christ, they change their life. Their lives are changed. Once, some ladies, they went to see the tomb. They thought the dead body of Jesus Christ is in the tomb. So they are going to what? Anoint him with different oil. My dear friends, when they reached to the tomb, they saw the tomb was empty. There was no Jesus. Then angel said to them, Why you are searching the living one among the dead? He is no more. Then they rushed to the disciple and the disciple says, Ah, the, to the disciple they said, we came to know the heavenly angel has spoken us that Jesus Christ is no more in the tomb. He has risen up. Disciples make fun, especially Thoma, the one who came to our country. He made fun. What you are saying? Keep quiet. Huh? Jesus was uh, buried and how he can rise up again? No. Unless until I touch his hand, unless until I see the signs, the mark on his forehead and his side, I am not going to believe. After eighth day, the next Sunday, Jesus came to them and said, Peace be unto you. Directly went to Thoma and said, Thoma, you want to see this one? Thoma, you want to see the mark? Thoma, you want to see this one? Thomas said, Lord, 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 Lord. He did not say anything, Lord forgive me. But he recognized and said, Lord, Lord. Then what happened? After saying Lord, after celebrating Christmas, what happened to Thomas? Friends, he just started his journey to come to Hindustan. That is India. Because of that, we are here today. 
friends if he could not be here if he could not have come in 2023 years back then we could be ramaswami we could be sitamma we could be another name yes the gospel came through thomas apostle thomas he came to kerala he doesn't know malayalam he doesn't know malayalam he was a jew and he when he came to kerala people might have asked him hello evade veedu that means where is your place huh? where is your place then thomas might have said no english also no he is a fisherman how he can speak english he doesn't know english he doesn't know malayalam how he understood how he shared the gospel seven churches has been established seven churches has been established my dear friends that is the work of the god that is the work of the holy spirit he changed today we receive jesus christ as our personal savior and we are the saved people but we are limited with the fun limited with the merry making limited with the biryani limited with the all kinds of delicious food kakara and uh, pitta and everything but we are not going out of that one this is the season to share god's word to somebody and saying my savior is born in a manger not that one but say my jesus is alive my jesus is alive he is the living god he is not the dead god that message has to reach to every people dear friends if we are entering to his kingdom he said be like a baby be like a child then you come to my kingdom as we are celebrating the baby jesus let us put ourselves into the baby place and commit our life lord make me a baby so i can be in your kingdom god may bless us thank you